best entertainment on the earth. Tune in for Comics with Birch. Hey everybody, this is Birch, and uh, here's a question, which is uh, self-admittedly long, but it's actually not that long. Uh, hey Birch, still loving your videos. My question today is about comics and religion. I have noticed that, especially with the X-Men, and since the 2000s, comic books have been really weird when it comes to religion in their comic books. Now you're talking about uh, Nightcrawler uh, being the fake Pope uh, in Chuck Austin's run, right? you? No, maybe not. They usually stay away from it and leave it for characters like Daredevil, Nightcrawler, and Huntress. But at the same time, you have so many villains being overly religious and evil, such as the Purifiers and recently the Right in Hellions. Well, also the Right back in uh, X-Factor, right? You had a weird foot soldier character spewing random Bible verses against mutants that don't even properly reflect religion. Or worse, you have characters like Azrael doing the same thing in the Red Robin book. Or when you have Nightcrawler or Simon Baz being bashed for their beliefs and not having their rebuttals back. What seems worse is these comics usually seem anti-religious. For example, in Red Robin Run, Tim Drake blames God and religion for Azrael's views, when it really those views are at stark difference with the cores of religion. It always uh, seems to be anti-Christian. You never have Muslim villains or Jewish villains. And it always seems to be a cult like Christianity bigoted groups. I understand the importance of critiquing negative religion and practices, but when you have children reading comics and have the purifiers wearing crosses shooting up mutant high schools, what message are you showing them? It wouldn't be a huge problem if they didn't balance it back out with positive, but when you have only a few characters positively reflecting that, it honestly makes me grossed out. I know comics don't want to alienate people, but when religion is part of what about 75 to 80% of people's lives and only like four characters partake in it, I find it weird and that in itself alienating. I want to know about what She-Hulk believes or Carol Danvers or John Kent or Falcon. I find it really negative not to have these facets of their lives or worse, strongly outweigh the portrayal of religion in the extreme and usually extremely false representations of it. Let us know what you think. All right. Not that long a uh, message, um, but, you know, a, a good one. And, and um, I, you know, what the uh, too long didn't read answer is that a lot of the comic writers are atheists or agnostic. They don't, uh, you know, they're, they're not religious. They don't really have any religious friends. And uh, maybe, you know, their encounters were with religion were with uh, parents they don't like or don't talk to anymore. And they're fed on a diet of uh, kind of Netflix and Hulu shows and other things that showcase the same. So that gets reflected in their writing. Um, some would point to this as an example of, you know, an agenda at play. But it, to me, it's, it's less agenda, and I know I'll trigger all kinds of people by saying that, and more upbringing, in the sense that to the writers writing this, they're not sitting there going, ah, this is how I'll destroy Christianity. They're going, everyone I know and me already believes Christianity is dead and something to be mocked, so that's what I'm going to do. I, I don't believe that uh, these people are trying to sway hearts and minds. I believe they think the hearts and minds have already been swayed. I think in their, from their perspective, you know, it's, uh, they're, they're reflecting reality, when in effect it's really just their bubble's reality. Now, you can still call this an agenda and, and you know, all those things about it, but I think where it comes from starts to be a pretty kind of, it's, it tends to be pretty important. And in this case, you know, it, it, it is weird. I, I've talked to plenty of creators, and their viewpoint, their you know, their very hardened perspective is that this, this is what everybody believes, that really it's just a handful of yokels out there somewhere in the South that believes in any kind of religion. And, uh, you know, it's, it's not, um, you know, it's, it's just, uh, you know, it, 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 it doesn't track. It doesn't matter. That's kind of the perspective that they go in with. And so if, if their belief is that nobody knows anything about it, and that uh, nobody serious is actually religious, and it really is the parody they see on Netflix, well, then they're going to write that. And they're going to write it you know, confidently that they're reflecting reality. And they get to, they're like, hey, I'm with all the popular kids. I'm with the big group that believes that you know, religion is a big joke. Now, wh you know, what's, what's odd about that is, I think that the uh, the majority of I mean, there's been a lot of surveys around, you know, what's happening with religion. Are people getting more or less religious? Kind of all the, all the different you know aspects and pieces of it. 
But the common thing that uh, keeps coming up seems to be that, you know, people are casually religious, meaning there's a belief in religion, but a lot of people are not strong practitioners of religion. They're just kind of casually engaging with it. And that's why you see church attendance down, but you see people still identifying as Christian or, or what have you. Yes, uh, particularly in the younger generations, there's a more and more people are not identifying as Christian. They're identifying as agnostic or atheist, and they're doing so at greater numbers. However, um, this is not necessarily a new story. Yes, like it is, it is happening in greater numbers, but it's been pretty consistent over the last 50 years that younger people tend to identify as less religious, and when they get older, they identify as more religious. That tends to be a pretty common you know, track, pretty common path. And, and so, you know, I, I, these things, again, the numbers have shifted a bit, but it's, it's not, it's not, uh, I mean, this is somewhat of a natural human thing. And so, again, if you're thinking about the people who are coming in writing comics and doing this stuff right now, a lot of them tend to be younger, a lot of them tend to be in their 20s, sometimes early 30s, and they're reflecting the world around them. Now, I, I, you know, it's kind of sad, baffling, whatever, you know, adjective you'd like to use that somebody who's writing about, you know, people and kind of condition are stuck in such a bubble that, you know, it, it goes to such extremes because I, I think it's an irrefutable fact, although I've had people argue with me plenty. I've had people tell me, no, no, there's, there's tons of religious representation in comics and they always hit Nightcrawler. Uh, but Nightcrawler's representation of religion is, is not the same in 2021 or 2022, as it was back in, you know, 1980. I mean, Night, Nightcrawler is, is not that, I mean, it, well, the best way to put it is not that religious. He's still, they'll, they'll bring him out when they need him to sound, you know, say something vaguely religious -y, but not really any kind of his, his piece. Yes, they draw uh, Kitty Pride with a Jewish star necklace every now and then when they want to, you know, seemingly when they want to kind of remind people that, yeah, we're still doing this. But there's no real commitment to the bit. And I think that, you know, again, I've gotten in some pretty fierce arguments with people in comics that say, you know, no, nothing has changed. Religion is still there. But I, I don't see how you make that case. Uh, religion has definitely dropped. Now, to be fair, I don't think religion was at an all-time high in the 80s or the 90s either. I don't think you had you know, this huge representation of religious characters going on back in that time period. Uh, there was more than today, but I mean, there, it's not like we were swimming in, you know, a properly represented, you know, religious allegories, and, and largely for the same reason. A lot of the comic writers back then were, were also atheists and, and agnostics, and, and they, they were not religious too. I, I mean, it's, it's, this isn't necessarily a new phenomenon. I think it's, it's increased... Um, but it's like taking the religious content in comics from, say, 8% down to 6% or 8% down to 4%. Um, I think that if you're arguing that, that stuff has shifted, I think that's a hard argument to make. If you're arguing that, you know, the representation is out of whack and there should probably be more to be more representative of, you know, the population, I think there you have a much more solid argument, and, and I would agree. Um, I think, you know, in a very completely you know, capitalistic money kind of way, um, you know, you're leaving money on the table because there is an audience to be served there. Now, the other thing, though, that I think is, uh, and this is why I think comics has always struggled a little bit with how to represent religion, is that you've got characters out there who are gods. I mean, you've got Odin running around and you've got Superman, you know, with godlike powers. And you have, so in that world, it's, it's tough to kind of balance that against, say, Christianity or, or other things. It's just, it's, it's tougher, weird to do. Again, not impossible, but it is, I, I'm sympathetic to the comment of, like, how do you properly represent, you know, Christianity in a reasonable way when you've got characters, you know, traveling through time? And I think that does make it more difficult. It requires a more skilled writer. Not impossible, but it does require a more skilled writer, and you know, things are where they are. The other part to all this, I guess, to, to conclude it all up, was another piece kind of in the middle of your note about, uh, yeah, but, you know, other religions, when they are represented, are represented very, uh, very fairly. 
Um, and, you know, Christianity always tends to be the go-to for, you know, the kind of the, the dumb mob bigot kind of role. And uh, you're right. I mean, there, <laughs> that is true. Um, I mean, you look at the backlash, and it, this is a, a, you know, an example of where Holy Terror, all right, a Frank Miller book, not a good book. I mean, you know, if you read it, it's it's not, you know, you, you, people go into the anti-Muslim aspects of it, but in terms of just a, a good story, it's it's not Frank Miller's shining moment by any stretch of the imagination. Um, it, it's it's on the low end of his work, and you know, any, you can't say anything good about that book. Now, not that I'm saying everybody should, but that book is, is hard condemned, aggressively condemned, gets Frank Miller kicked out of a convention, uh, what, 10 years later because of concerns that he will incite violence for this book that had no footprint. I mean, it, it didn't sell well, didn't do, I mean, it, it was not like this book was all over the place in markets, had any kind of traction. It didn't. And yet uh, that book is, is hard condemned, aggressively condemned. Uh, whereas, you know, you, you could do a book, uh, you know, having Christians murder the mutants and crucify them on the, <laughs> on the X-Men mansion lawn. And people are like, yeah, that checks out. And, and it's a clear bias, no doubt about it. And in many ways, I see it as a lazy bias. Again, I know that there's a, a point of view out there that this is an intentional, like, aha, this is how we're going to get people away from Christianity. I, I just, having again, having met a lot of these people, it, it's just not that smart. And, and when I say smart, I mean, it's like, this is just core to how they believe. There are writers out there who believe that if you go down into the south you know you i i we inter- i did that interview with nancy collins right and she talked about her love of the south and everything else and i got a couple creators reach out and say wow it's really great that you promoted nancy collins you know that you 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 know somebody who doesn't get nearly enough uh, publicity can't agree with her on her views on the south though you're likely to get lynched just going into some of those states and but no you're not <laughs> That's a that's a very weird view of the South. It's a very ignorant view of the South, and I think a lot of these these moments that you see in comics uh, where it, you get this aggressively anti-Christian bias, it's I mean it's it, I don't know what's the word it's it's wrong, it's a lot of ignorance it, and it's and really offensive ignorance. Not not just like oh they're a little dumb, but like you know this is somebody who's willingly choosing to believe something absolutely absurd because that's what they see on TV because that's, that's what they they'll see on Netflix because that's the go-to villain. And you know, it, it, there is not a worry at the moment because the media, the society, whatever it is as successfully painted, you know, Christian advocacy groups as, you know, all the wrong things, white supremacists, racists, all the rest. So when you can insult them, and if those advocacy groups come out and say, "Hey, you are uh, no, this is not this is not right," much like you do you see for like the anti-Muslim uh, Defamation League or some of these other, you know, other uh, organizations, anti-Semitism, which feels like the next one to fall. By the way, it feels like that's the next one where you know they're chipping away at that so they can get you know comfortable with just being very anti-Semitic and you know no problems, but. With, with Christianity, it's, uh, you know, if they object, it's like, well, you know, you're probably all the things. You're, you're probably a racist. You're probably a bigot. You probably live in the South. You probably don't know how to tie your shoes. You just, it's, it's very hardened, and it's, it's gross. But that's, I think, a lot of what's going on here. It's like you've got people who know nothing about that, you know, religion or those people, and they don't care to learn. And so they, they become an easy punching bag that they know they can get away with. It's a very cheap easy villain. Whenever I see a, uh, you know, angry, dumb Christian mob in a comic book, uh, my first thought every time is this writer is just not very creative. This I mean, because they're going to a trope that's just run into the ground old and not even handling well. It's like, my, my God says you should die. It's like, I mean, how, really? How 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 many times have we seen this story? 
it's lazy writing. It, I mean, that's fundamentally, and I, and I frankly, as a tip, um, if you ever decide to get angry about some of this stuff and go object to the creators, um, this is lazy writing that I've seen a million times before. It's uncreative, unoriginal, and extremely boring is a much more effective insult and accurate one, frankly, than, you know, going at them for being a socialist or anything else. I mean, half those labels, a person probably are like, yeah, what's your point? So anyway, interesting question. Religion is something that uh, I wish was more balanced out in comics, certainly. Um, I don't, I'm, I, I've said before, I'm not a religious guy myself, but I have great respect for, you know, these organizations, be it, be it, be it all the different religions. If you're out there trying to help you know, your fellow person and do some good in the world. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm in support of that. Uh, I, I wish you well. I, I, it's not <laughs> a fact that does not escape me is that in Seattle, a place that prides itself on taking care of the underprivileged and all the rest. It's uh, you know, we, we take care of the homeless, everything else. Uh, the groups that tend to do the most in terms of opening their doors for shelter, when it gets cold, feeding, clothing, all the rest tend to be the religious groups. Um, every time. They're the ones that are out there sacrificing, kind of feeding, all clothing, all the rest of this stuff. And uh, the uh, the you know, the activists who are who really want you to know it's a big deal, they're like, oh, yeah, but the, the, there's a new season of, uh, you know, Marvelous Miss Mabel on, uh, you know, I'd, I'd really rather watch that. So, I don't know. I, I Again, bad things can happen anywhere. Absolutely, there's been some religious people who have used their religion to attack and hold people down. Uh, those actions are terrible, no doubt about it. Uh, wrong, wrong, terrible, bad. But I think that uh, it's unfair for that to get focused on all the time. And for the actual positive aspects for the community that go on, I, you know, what, you know, where's the attention to that? Anyway, my perspective, let me know yours in the comments below, and thanks for listening.